In a world where nostalgia and wonder abound, folks flock together admiring the mighty, the marvelous, the super. Have you pondered how to begin your wanderings of the nerd realms? Well, hot dang. Welcome to the Dame Patrol. Your vigilant Mrs. Three are here delivering the news, cues, and reviews from across the geek world. Get a move on, gals. Your vigil has begun. Hi there, listeners. It's Stephanie, and I'm here to introduce you guys to the Dame Patrol podcast. And I am here with my lovely fellow dames, and to my left is... Amy, and I'm not dead yet. And across from me is beautiful. And the strongest dame, uh, Herminia, but y'all know me as Minnie, a.k.a. Strongest Dame. Let me know and that's my new official title, Strongest Dame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you guys missed our recap episode, Amy and I both succumbed to the con flu, so... It was gross. So, yeah, mm-hmm. Minnie, Minnie got to choose the title of Strongest Dame. Yep. Yeah. She yep. claimed it. There was no tag team match. There was no belts. Hey, you know what? We had a vote for everyone that was there at the <laughs> recording. And I mean, two to, two to zero. You I and Producer it. Dan just went, yeah. you're like, he's like, I, I, I Producer hear. Dan, how could you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It's going to be quite an episode since we are coming live from the, at the time, the Dame HQ Yes. Yes. Because we didn't get evicted from the Dame Den. We just had to uh, change some scenery because our beautiful, crazy, crazy Uncle Ben at 1120 Fulton Avenue, Sweet K, decided we should take a break before the holiday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate him. The pugs pugs need naps. The pugs need naps. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he had to send out the giant penny to be polished. (laughs) Right next to the T-Rex. Yep. So good. But as he is one of our sponsors, we also have a brand shiny new sponsor, which is... Oh my goodness. Yes, but I have a question for you first. (gasps) Mm -hmm. Are you on the search for a scent that makes you stand out? (gasps) Well, there's no need to transmute your arm or your leg for a new scent. Our lovely sponsors at Quill and Ink Alchemy are here to make fantastic fan scents inspired by your favorite characters (gasps) and fandoms. Oh my. Use the lovely code HOTDAME for 15% off your next purchase on their lovely Etsy storefront. Search Ink and Quill Alchemy on Etsy to find all their lovely wares. Oh shoot, I want to smell so good. And I, I need both of my arms and my legs for our topic tonight. Steph, what is our topic? So our topic tonight is anime for the comic book fan, which I have to admit, I, this I feel kind of targeted by this episode because <gasps> I know I was, uh, so I watched Toonami like a lot of kids okay. did, love Sailor Moon. We love Tom. And uh, kind of was into some of the popular stuff like Fruits Basket and whatnot. <gasps> and then I drifted away. So there's a lot of anime stuff I feel I missed out on while I was delving headfirst into comics so i am really curious about what kind of stuff you guys will recommend Ooh, I, m- I miss tom oh thank you yeah tom was great uh, <sighs> is any tom back he is back they do uh He's- they actually show one of the 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 shows i think we might we might all recommend and or talk about mm-hmm. on on tsunami now oh goodness is it are we all gonna say it at the same time i don't know i, I mean we, we can try we can we try. try let's try, try. let's okay. try my, my hero, hero academia. academia. Oh, oh yeah. <gasps> yeah. That's not my quirk. Yeah. That's not my quirk. That my might time. be my quirk. My quirk is timing. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. So we got one person covered. Yep. Yeah. So how do we describe this to somebody if they had never seen the show? Um, I, I would personally say that My Hero Academia is very much uh, superhero Hogwarts. Ooh, Ooh, that's a very nice one. Shoot, that kind of wrapped it all right real quick. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I almost like to describe it as like, imagine X-Men, but like... Everyone is an X-Men and that's the setting of the superhero universe because that's kind of it. Everyone is has the X gene on except for a few people like our protagonist. Our protagonist is Zuku Midoriya, a.k.a. Deku. Yes, he wakes up in a world full of quirks. He is the quirkless one. Mm-hmm. And all he wants to do is be a superhero. Oh, and then I feel I should clarify quirks. Like I said, like in a world where everyone's X-Men, quirk is how they basically say like their power, their mutation, as it were. So that mm-hmm. way that would, you know, not delving into copyright stuff. So it's their way of saying that they it have works. powers. Yeah, yep. it works so well. Mm-hmm. But he so we're following his it currently is available on Netflix, Hulu, not to, Netflix, not Netflix. Uh, not Hulu Net- oh. and uh, Phantom, Funimation Funimation's app, app which oh. is actually really good if you do not uh, have not tried the Funimation's app. We love you, Funimation. Please sponsor us. That'd be great. Yep. <laughs> and we would love it for these episodes. Sponsored, not sponsored. <laughs> sponsored, not sponsored. Aiming to be sponsored. So 
um, Deku, of course, has gone to the superhero Hogwarts. Yep. He's mm-hmm. been accepted. He's also been taken under his wing by the hero of all heroes. All Might, of oh. course. And All Might, uh, since we're looking towards helping out the comic book fan here, All Might is essentially Superman. Oh, mm-hmm. with bigger hair with bigger hair <laughs> you know the bigger the hair the closer to god and that's how powerful <laughs> he is um and all might decides to take deku under his wing because he has a secret of his own and he believes that someone who is quirkless mm-hmm. uh, aka powerless can learn to be something can learn to fight on the level of individuals who have had quirks all their lives Mm -hmm. and deku is basically a giant nerd much like us being able Mm -hmm. to steal anything about our favorite characters so good so can deku Mm -hmm. deku has probably written a ton of fan fiction about his favorite superheroes (laughs) so i appreciate i want i want that missing episode where like they they go it's like raka finds his all might (laughs) slash i don't know who would who would it be (laughs) midnight midnight Midnight. all might midnight fan fiction oh golly it's not all my grand torino fan fiction it might be all might midnight we don't know deku's got a (laughs) or his uh eraser eraser mick fanfic (laughs) oh eraser there's this the cast on this is fantastic whether Mm -hmm. you're listening to it in japanese and you're doing subtitled or you're doing it dubbed for english the array of characters their personal struggles, their storylines all tied together in this great, it really is like, it is superhero Hogwarts, but not just focusing on Harry. Yeah. Which is is the key point that mm-hmm. a lot of uh, people seem to miss with Hogwarts is that it, it the main draw is that it's never just about Harry. It should be about everybody and exactly. everyone's excited about the world, but we don't get too much about the world. Um, one of my favorite characters is definitely uh, Uraka. <laughs> Or mm-hmm. Ochako, depending on I whatever. I call her Uraka. I call her Uraka, uh, a.k.a. her superhero name is Uravity, which is fantastic. Her quirk is that she can make things lighter and then make things heavier to launch them into mm. people. And she's just a fantastic character, definitely carrying herself on her own, uh, having to come from a background where her family didn't have a lot of money. So she's uh-huh. very humble and wants to help people. And it's just so cool that she's such a really cool female character to look up to mm-hmm. especially for the young kiddos exactly yeah. she's delightful she's got such a great optimism about her she's earnest um and also she has i'm going to call it my quirk uh naja on pretty much command from using your powers too much <laughs> so i'm on that that boat also i'm apologizing anytime i squee there's gonna be so much squeeing in this episode i mean it's anime it's oh. very do you have a favorite stephanie um okay so I would say I love Uraka like a ton, Mm -hmm. but also I do love, uh, oh gosh, what is her name? Uh, We call her Momo. (laughs) She's known by Momo. Yeah, it's Momo. Yeah, Momo. So that's her nickname, but her thing, her hero name is Creaty, and she can basically create anything that she understands the chemical composition of. So if you've seen Full Metal Alchemist or anything like that it's basically like that without the transmutation circles and from her own body which is pretty metal and she's great <laughs> oh gosh she's so fantastic and she always has that great bookshelf yep mm-hmm. oh, gotta carry those books on your booty yep mm-hmm. get it get oh, it yeah. oh right. so I'm, who's your favorite Do you oh, have a favorite oh gosh besides uraka and momo which was my other two um i'm gonna give a shout out to the most underappreciated hero female hero in that collection invisible girl yeah invisible girl (laughs) she's so optimistic and when you see her it's just like that fresh of fresh breath of fresh air but also sue sue aka froppy she is the springtime hero she's the the water hero she's got you know the all the powers of a frog which seems really derpy and then you see her that she's like one of the first people to help out she's always about the teamwork and it's she also carries such a great message with her too, and it's she's adorable. She <sighs> really is. And mm-hmm. honestly, anyone who thinks it's weird that she has all the powers of a frog, we have a superhero that has all the powers of a spider <laughs> who has had multi different kinds of franchises and IPs. Exactly. So it's time for the frog to shine. It's time for the frog to shine. Let the frog ride off into the sunset and the cavalry saving people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. No, so, I'm just thinking of frogs on horseback. Uh, I mean, that's a good thought. Uh, so should we move on to some other topics before this becomes the My Hero Academia Hour? Yeah. Not that I'm opposed to that, but... <laughs> we could do that, but I think other people would like to know some of our other choices. Yeah, especially me, because I, I, I know My Hero, but I feel okay. like you guys are going to be telling me stuff I don't know about, so I'm excited. Well, it depends. Do we Rochambeau? Who's going next? 
Uh, you go. You get the hot potato. Oh, potatoes, potatoes. Well, instead of potatoes, I'm going to take you deep beneath the sea and go with Princess Jellyfish. Ooh. Ooh. So hands down, one of my absolute, aside from Cowboy Bebop, which we could talk about that that intro all day. Mm-hmm. That is so catchy. Mm-hmm. And I, you're humming it now. I appreciate you so <laughs> much, Minnie. Um, Princess Jellyfish has the opening sequence is literally a... If you are any type of movie fan, this thing just drools at the mouth of it, it. It foams at the mouth. It makes you so happy. It's got Star Wars references, Kill Bill, um, James Bond, the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, oh, it keeps <sighs> singing in the rain. Um, it keeps the the graduate. Um, it keeps literally I'm trying to remember all of them because I can see them all playing Mary Poppins it's playing in my head it's one of my favorite intros if you are a nerd you will get this open but basically our protagonist in this one her name is Tsukimi and Tsukimi is an otaku and when I say otaku if you do not know just yet it is Japanese for nerd and they're not just Light key, like, low like, playing nerd. Mm-hmm. They're they're real, real hardcore heavy they're metal real, nerds. This real is into what it. They focus on. <laughs> yep, it's super hardcore. So Tsukimi has just moved to Japan or to Tokyo. Excuse me, from the where she lived with her dad before her mom died, and she is a jellyfish otaku. And now, if you're like, what? She loves jellyfish. She dreams about jellyfish. She wants to be an illustrator. She draws jellyfish for days. It just keeps going. So I relate to this main character already because uh, (laughs) if anyone doesn't know, we went to an aquarium specifically because they had the jellyfish that you could touch without it stinging you. (gasps) The moon jellies? Yes, the moon jellies. So I'm already like intrigued. So continuing. (laughs) Yes. So... She's such an unlike. she is our jellyfish otaku, and she lives in a house called Ama Mizukan with a bunch of other, wait for it, lady otaku. Yes. So get we, it, girls. We, <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. They're all, she's the youngest of them, but they all range in age. There is a um, doll otaku. There's a train otaku. There's an old man otaku. <laughs> there's a three kingdoms otaku. Her name is Maya. She is like that. <laughs> yes. She is just all left field. And then, of course, there is a recluse. And the recluse happens to be a fanboy's, uh, uh, a boy love manga artist. We never see her. Her name's Miss Majro. But she lives, they all live in this house, basically. What's happening is somebody wants to knock it down. And Tsukimi, one night on the street, she goes to visit Clara, who is her jellyfish love. Um, Literally, is a jellyfish in a tank at a store down the street. And she meets a beautiful princess, a stylish, beautiful princess that saves her jellyfish. She takes this jellyfish home back to the apartment and finds out, wait, this beautiful princess is a boy. Bum, bum, <sighs> bum. Hot jelly. Oh, my gosh. And it turns out to be this great. It's 12 episodes, short and sweet, but it's this. Yes. Would you say that she was not ready for this jelly? <laughs> she was so not ready for this jelly. She had to go buy equipment and supplies. There wasn't enough makeup remover. There wasn't enough soap. It's fantastic. Um, it, it's a great look at, it's almost a slice of life, but it's people bringing people out of their shells. It's making friends regardless of how you look. It's got just... It's so good. And the end is a delightful surprise. And you're like, wait, it's only 12 episodes. I need more. Give me more. So. And it's a manga. Yes. I forgot. But it is 12 episodes in anime. (laughs) And it is currently, actually, I think it's still ongoing manga. I got to check on that. But I love it. I Mm -hmm. love it a lot. And we're talking about empowered, empowered ladies. I'm all about that. Jellyfish Otaku gets it. Yep. Get it. Get it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, who gets the the football next? Who gets the jellyfish next? The jellyfish next. Oh, I don't want to catch a jellyfish. I'll just squish it. Okay. Uh, As long as you have peanut butter, everything will be jelly. Okay. That's fine. I hate PB&J, actually. But anyway. Okay. Retract it. Retract it. Retract it. Okay. Actually, we're going to somersault to me because my show is Kaleidostar. Ooh, I don't know anything about this. Give me. Yeah. Um, I've made Stephanie watch a few episodes of this. Indeed. I love it. But Kaleidostar essentially circles around a young girl named Sora Nagino. It actually focuses in a circus in America. Mm -hmm. So Sora flies from Japan to America by herself 
because she wants to be part of the circus that makes people believe that their dreams can be reality. Aww. It's basically if Disneyland was a circus, that's what the setup is. And so she goes there to audition and try to make her dreams come true. And she barely makes it. She's great acrobat, great performer in her own hometown. But this is kind of the big leagues now. She has to learn that there are things that she needs to learn to focus on. Performing is not just nailing a move. It's smiling the entire time. Every job is important, regardless if you're handing out souvenirs to children instead of actually performing on stage, you're still a part of the cast. And it's different things like that. The Sora herself is so earnest and a great, great personality of like a creative, someone who's learning that your trait is great, but you just need to hone it so you can be super good with it. So you see her evolution through uh, becoming a star of the Kaleida stage and also combating with her rival slash almost best friend Layla Hamilton and Layla is always the star of the Kaleida stage. Layla never doesn't get the starring role so in any um, show. So imagine Sharpay from High School Musical. <laughs> <laughs> As an acrobat. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to that would actually I was already intrigued and now I'm like tell me more. Are you fabulous? Should I slip you some pink stuff? To yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Layla mm -hmm. Layla's fantastic. She's very hardcore and she's almost She's definitely the other side of the coin to where she's gotten herself to this point to where she's always the star. But what do you have to give up to always be the star? Oh, mm. I like What's it. What's the price of the fame and getting the dream? Does it even feel like a dream anymore? Hmm. You're asking about, this is asking like the hard hitting questions for an anime. I know. That's why I love it. <laughs> Watch the first season. Second season. Eh, the first season's a <laughs> You're like, don't go in for the second. Go in for the first. Mm -hmm. Hang out. Yep. And there's a, quite a number of episodes in that series. I remember because we were going through the Funimation app and being like, wow, that's, there's a lot here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's without the second season. Holy cruckies. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so somersaults yeah. away. Mm -hmm. Where are we? Where are we traversing Ooh, to next? I guess I I think I can talk about something a little off collar, but also on brand okay. for me that I feel that would appeal to the Animu fans, um, or well, the not the Animu fans, but uh, the comic book fans. So there is a, a long kind of franchise mm -hmm. uh, with robots, because of <gasps> course there is, because it's me talking about it. But it's called a uh, Brave Police J Decker. Ooh. And it is this show where this kid stumbles upon a robot that the police are building and like just talks with it and interacts with it. And oh. in the result of it, it gives it uh, gives this robot a soul and actually oh. become they become friends. And then the police, uh, there's this whole thing where they're going to wipe it because they're like, wow, it's acting kind of weird. But then they're like, oh, no, wait, this is this is way better than when we programmed it to be. So it's fine. And then when they copy like stuff to make new robots, all the other robots are having souls too. So it's actually really <sighs> cool. And it kind of starts off like slice, uh, like episode of the week. And then like halfway through, it's like, no, 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 there's a plot here. And it gets like kind of like goes from lighthearted to dark back to like all the slight stuff. And it's actually really, really cool. And I like it. And Ooh. there's, um, you have a Lois Lane type character. You have like Ooh. kind of, um, uh, the, Lois the, Lane with robots? Okay, yeah. now I'm involved. Yeah, there's a Lois Lane type <laughs> you, you like journalist <laughs> uh, who's kind of like friends with one of the robots. In you know, if you if you you know win, you know look kind of look a little bit, maybe you can see like they're a bit more. And then there's also this uh, military officer who's also like one of their allies too. And they also have uh, this girl that's about the main character's age. Her name is, uh, goodness, I have it written down, Regina. And she has this whole arc about, um, it's kind of weird, but her no, it's dad. An it's, it's, it's an anime. It's an anime. It's going to be weird. Yeah. But be. her her dad was a police officer. Her mom was actually a uh, villain, I guess, a super Ooh, villain. Okay. And he would not arrest her mom, leading to her mom doing some messed up stuff. And she saw this happen. <gasps> And so now she's like, the law is the only thing that's right. And my dad was weak. And so she has this oh, whole arc where she has to learn. Crispies. Learn to love again with robots. And it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and our main character is a, kind of like a Steven Universe type character. Like Aww. kind of a soft boy. It's great. I'm okay with Does that. Does he cry for the first five episodes? Cries because of reasons, because okay. of emotion. It was okay. gentle, yes. gentle crying gentle. for those first five easy. episodes. Yeah. I love, I love Steven, and I'm yeah. sure I'll love that kid. But who? There's a lot of crying. In the first <laughs> episodes. 
Well, they also have the what was it the the breakfast friends? <laughs> that was crying breakfast. The crying breakfast friends. But yeah, so there, I recommend that, especially if you're like into Transformers, but you want something different, and it it's all on YouTube because it's an old Japanese anime. So Yay, yeah, hey, I like it. Mm-hmm. Dig it. Yeah, cool. All right, I'm okay with that transformation. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm good with it. But how do you feel about stepping through a door on a Saturday and taking yourself to another world? Down, down. Ooh, Ooh let's go. I call that having a day off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my next anime is, it's a little more, again, I tried to take mine a little more slice of life, a little more and more relaxed because I have a tendency to like to unwind with my anime because if I get a cliffhanger, I am so screwed for the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. So if you are one of those people that's just like, I love the first comic book I thought of actually was Flavor or Moonstruck, like kind of that nice, gentle Mm. going with that arc, Restaurant to Another World. Ooh. is a 12 episode again i'm just going for the enemy 12 episode beautiful just sweet story they're all little vignettes essentially of every every day of um it's basically saturn but it's saturday wink wink a door <laughs> appears somewhere and upon entering through it you are treated to a stunning restaurant where the master will make treats to your heart's delight and this sweet surprise is sure to leave you hungry so hmm. our main character, it translates from episode to episode. We have, um, it's filled with a lot of different fantasy. It's not technically high fantasy, but you get princesses, you get witches, you get sirens at one point, which are really cool. Ooh. Okay. Um, and inside the restaurant works, a, yes, there are dragons. <laughs> you meet a there dragon. There are bears. There are bears. <laughs> producer, one word. <laughs> producer Dan got really excited yeah. and started doing yeah. pantomime, and I'm scared of a muscle. <laughs> Pterodactyl. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I wish you guys could see oh, this, but so a podcast is not a visual medium. <laughs> Currently not this visual medium. So our first episode, we meet a dragon who transforms into a woman to go get beef stew from the master every <laughs> single Saturday. And she just sits there and she'll come in either before or after everybody's there. She'll eat like seven or eight bowls. Then she will pay him lots of gold and come back with a big giant pot and takes it home. <laughs> to sit on her hoard and eat slowly her beef stew until next week where she can go do it all over again. Oh, goodness. I like like this already. (laughs) So that's the first episode. What we end up having happen is uh, the person who comes to work in the shop for the master who's the chef, her name is Mineta, and she's a demon, and she's gotten lost, and people have been really mean to her, and she found her way on happenstance into the restaurant, and the door only appears every Saturday. So... The chef takes her under his wing and says, you can work here. I'll pay you a wage and I'll feed you to your heart's content. So it is this great opportunity to see her interact with all of these different characters. There's an archaeologist type who she found a guy's journal and he would go to this one place all the time. She's like, why would he go here? And then the door appears. There's dwarves that only go in to drink whiskey. There's (laughs) as they do. (laughs) Exactly. They're like, no more beer. We need whiskey. And then they get so in love with whiskey and what the restaurant represents that they build a cottage around this, but they have like a steel door that protects the room where the door appears, but the door only appears on Saturday. So it looks like an empty room and it's behind a steel locked door and it's weird, (laughs) but it's all of these little vignettes. It's so great. It's so sweet. You can watch it. And at the end, again, you're like, what, what just happened? Where, where's the rest of the show? And it just goes bloop and it's done, but it's so yummy. Literally. It's because it can only be around for X amount of time. So yeah. that's why there's only X amount of episodes. I know. There's 12 episodes and it is sweet and wonderful. And it's got all these different amazing women in it because it's equally balanced between men and women. But the archaeologist is one of my favorites because she has a fight with a prince about how her meat sandwich is better than his croquettes or his <laughs> fried fish sandwich. And then everybody goes by a different name. And there's a lizard person that loves curry. No, the lion loves, there's like a lion guy that loves curry and there's a lizard guy that loves something else and they have to fight everybody so that he can go through the door to buy, to eat however many bowls he wants and then takes it back to his village. Like this is a thing, you guys. Oh man. But there are dragons. I'm always down for dragons. With dragons. <laughs> you had me a bear. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All right. Well, I will close the door on my, my sweet, beautiful selection and pass over what restaurant to another world to someone else okay well 
I don't have a restaurant, but I do have another world. Okay. Ooh. So I have, I already know it's a little known anime. Again, I'm tapping that Funimation app because the Funimation app is so wide and erasive with how much mm-hmm. anime is actually on there. But Murder Princess. What? Ooh. Murder Princess. More princesses? Is, Talk there's to me. more princesses. I love princesses and not just for that reason. Wink, wonk. <laughs> but Murder Princess is delightful. It's metal as heck. Oh. Um, so it's very much for the fantasy comic book fan. Mm-hmm. And very much kind of like the D&D fan as well. Basically a good homebrew. So it's, uh, it centers around a princess who it opens on her kingdom as her kingdom is being overrun by people who are trying to take over the land and her father is has been killed so the king has been killed that her handmaiden is trying to protect her and so is uh basically the court advisor and her brother's away at another war Mm -hmm. so in order to take over the kingdom she's the last person that they need to kill so there's no one around for the air and -hmm. she's sent away into the forest to keep her protected on the way running she finds a giant beast that then starts hunting her as well. What? And she runs smack dab into a bounty hunter. Girl can't get so, a break, can yeah. she? <laughs> so Princess Alita, that's the other thing, her name is Alita, which is a fantastic name, runs into this bounty hunter who is named Phallus. And so Phallus <laughs> is fantastic. Yeah, I know. It's a delightful name, right? I'm sorry, the giggles I had to have. It. I know, I know. <laughs> Phallus is a fantastic bounty hunter, but she's very just self-centered and focused on everything that she needs to do to get paid and get food and that's it she doesn't care about anything else but she decides to protect this princess because the thing that's chasing her is a huge bounty on its head they end up getting shoved off of a cliff together and when they land they have switched bodies oh shoot it got better yeah so (laughs) phallus now looks like princess alita and alita is stuck in phallus's body and so the only way to protect the kingdom and to get phallus the biggest pay is to go and pretend to be Princess Alita Forland and use her sword to destroy anyone who's coming in to kill the kingdom. And it's only six episodes and oh, there's so no. many plot, like twists and turns of everything. It's a very cool dynamic of someone who grew up with a lot of money and someone who grew up with nothing, learning to respect and kind of love each other, uh, both in a friendship way and kind of in like a romantic way, mm-hmm. and realizing that they're stuck like this. There's no way to get themselves out of this. And with only six episodes, they waste absolutely no time, but you do not feel rushed at all. Oh, my favorite part. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Okay. Murder Princess on my list. (laughs) I'm writing down. And the opening theme is appropriately as metal as heck. It's so good. Gets you super pumped. It's on my playlist for working out. (laughs) (laughs) I'm okay with this. Do you have any more murdering princesses? Me? Oh, goodness. All right. Well, I don't have... Let me just check in my bag. Uh, let me just check in my bag. Do you have any more royalty in bags around here somewhere? Um, well, let's see. I could talk about one of two things. So I think I am going to talk about one that I'm watching right now that is not, uh, you know, it's not the most unpopular thing, but it has been a, like eight years since this, I realize. It's been about eight years since it came out. So, uh, yeah, according to Netflix, it's been about eight years since it came out. So I'm talking about Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So not the first one, but the redo, which is more faithful to the manga. So Mm -hmm. just do yourself a favor. Watch that. Not the original, because one of the reasons I didn't watch this after having watched the first one in high school is I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to have to rewatch so much of the same stuff. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. They get through everything that was covered in the original series in like the first 12 episodes. Like oh, okay. they yeah, it. it's fast paced on that one, but everything is so much more tied together. Uh the so the El, El, uh the Elric brothers are back, but they have a much better job of like making sure like uh all their allies are more interconnected into the story. So Winry's more um like their um Full me- the auto male mechanic, which mm-hmm. is basically the person who makes like prosthetic lens. Uh, she's more involved. They have Hawkeye, Riza Hawkeye, who is the sharpshooter that works for uh, the Colonel Mustang, which is one of their allies. She's mm-hmm. also way more involved, which is really dope because she was one of the characters that was always like a standout in the first one. And just, it's just so much better. Oh my goodness. I, I just can't get over it because I'm getting right back into anime after having st- stepped away for a bit. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad I gave this another shot because yeah. it's so good. Well, well, even I've watched most of the series and even like the side characters mm-hmm. are such a good 
there's such a good chunk of like character writing. Like one of my favorite characters is Maria Ross. Mm-hmm. And she, all she is is a lieutenant that's uh, meant to protect Ed and his brother with a gun. And she's not a, exceptionally great at weaponry or anything. She's just good at her job and gets very protective of anyone she has to work with. And she's so earnest and grows to kind of love the brothers as like little brothers of her own. Mm -hmm. And it's very cool watching the stuff that she goes through for them and for her friends. And just, and she's just a side character. She's not even a main character. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many cool side characters that they give such good, such good food, good things to ingest Mm -hmm. in terms of like storytelling. Mm -hmm. That's good. So it is... Uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Brotherhood. And it's great. And then make sure it has the Brotherhood on there because <laughs> otherwise you're going to watch the first one and get to a movie that's really, really weird. So just skip yeah. all not that. Not the live action. Uh, no. Well, no, no, no. We're Oof. talking about so. We're the, not talking any live so, action. Children. So the original one was <laughs> made before the manga was finished. So the original <gasps> one, they made up a ton of stuff. In, and then, sorry, in the Dame HQ, there's a pupper, and that pupper the is dog. Snor- the Dame dog, and it's snoring. <laughs> <laughs> that was the groan of dissatisfaction about the, the live action well, it's movie. because the Dame dog knows that something bad happens to a dog in Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> oh. oh, no. <laughs> no. No. I wasn't thinking about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, God. God. Spoiler, not spoiler, but it is still scarring. Oh. Yeah. I mean, if you've been to a, any anime convention or a convention, you've probably seen a shirt with the dog and a girl doing a dance in front of a circle. And no. yep, <laughs> it's a light show, you guys. It's very light. It's great. It's light. Watch it's with your great. children. Yeah. <laughs> Shh. All right, let's let's move away. Let's I'm gonna let's, gonna let's pass. Flee. Let's flee. Amy, Amy, do you want to final talk shots? About something? I I would no, like final shots? I, I would yeah. like to do just a a one quick over if we're gonna recommend movies for oh, what you take the lead on that we can we can do a quick one but i think i want to open this up to the floor because consistently there are strong empowered female characters coming out of the house of ghibli Whoop. Oh. ghibli ghibli and sometimes they always look alike but i love them anyway <laughs> i know well and, i have a weird one to, yeah. if we're going to talk about studio ghibli it, uh, so i think something that might be the really inspiring if you are a creative person and you're working on your first like novel, your first comic, or your first anything. Uh, Whisper of the Heart is oh, really good. It is uh, this yes. thing where this girl she wants to follow her dreams and write a novel, and she and you get to see like animated sequences from the book that she's writing, and then just and then also she has a friend who wants to become like the best violin maker, so he goes off to go do that, and so they both focus on their dreams even though other people don't understand their dreams and it's kind of great and also kind of inspiring as a creative person oh, yeah. also that one. both the dub and the original japanese have fantastic variations of country roads that's, that's true is so cool oh to start gosh. singing <laughs> yeah, I forgot. but the animation just yep. the rocking animation is all i keep seeing in my head mm-hmm. oh gosh yeah. oh i, I like concrete roads personally that's my favorite <laughs> one <laughs> all right <sighs> Um, I will actually, for the House of Ghibli, I was torn because there are so many fantastic female females that come mm-hmm. out of all of these movies. I mean, we could even throw it. You want to give a little love to Arietti? She turned out great. Or Ponyo. But, eh, eh, eh. Mm-hmm. I know. You're, you're swacking, swacking hand at me. Dame HQ. I like, hey, I love the borrowers. So Arietti as a whole, I love her, but she wasn't the best one in that. So we'll talk about borrowers later. Okay. Book to movie. We've yep. got that coming up soon. Don't, okay. don't hurt me. We're it's okay. It's okay. It's not as bad as the Frozen. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> gosh. I'm not going to even mention it. Anyway, so what I decided actually, I'm going to go with Sophie from Howl's Moving Castle, also known as Castle in the Air, which is literally sitting right behind the strongest dame on the bookcase. No joke. It's like right there. Um, it is one of my favorite books, and Howl's Moving Castle is a wonderfully, it's not even gelap, what is it, gelapidate? I can't say gel dilapidated wow i said gelatinous <laughs> squiggly <laughs> it's all such of stuff it's this brought together literal castle it's like if you gave a kid the opportunity to build their castle out of cardboard and everything else and it moves and it's driven by a fire demon but we meet sophie who is this rather timid young lady who makes hats and 
she happens to just catch the kindness or the niceties of a wizard named Howl, who has been known to quote unquote steal young ladies' hearts. And uh, a very jealous old lady gets all up on her and curses her to be an old lady. And we see Sophie take this entire journey through finding herself and being like, I'm an old lady. I can do whatever I want now. <laughs> this is perfect. And so she happens to befriend our wizard and she moves into the castle as a cleaning lady and she proves her worth and she never, she never backs down from a challenge and she believes in protecting people and helping people. And it's just, uh, it's so good. And also the merry go of life is one of my absolute favorite, uh, it's one of my favorite songs. So yeah, that will be out of the house of Ghibli. Mm -hmm. I would go with that one. Very nice, very nice. What about you? Um, from the House of Jubile, I am very, very torn between. I love Whisper of the Heart. That's one of my favorites. Um, it's always Cat a toss returns. up. <laughs> you know, I never really was a fan of Cat Returns, but yeah. Um, I'm a, it's always a toss up for me between Totoro or uh, my other favorite. But I'm going to mention my other favorite, which is Kiki's Delivery Service. Yeah, yeah. Kiki's Delivery Service never gets enough love, and I don't understand it. So good. So Kiki's Delivery Service is about a witch. We are in a world where witches are normal. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not to every town, but there are witches in the world. There are people who do magic or alchemy or making just potions for people. And Kiki is a witch who has come of age. And so she comes to the age to where she's done all of her training that she can at home with her mom. And now she has to go off into the world and find a town that doesn't have a witch and make her own job and earn her own funds so that she can settle herself in in her own job as a witch, regardless of whatever her power is. She doesn't have much of a power set yet. <laughs> she can fly, sort of. So she decides, <laughs> I'm going to go to this one town. It's coastal. That's cool. And try to make a delivery service. And so she doesn't have too much money. It's just her and her cat, Gigi trying to basically carve their way in life. And they come into this bakery and the wife's pregnant. The husband's like big, burly, quiet guy, but he's really, really nice. So and cute. she eventually starts working for them and does deliveries for them. And it's a lovely tale of finding yourself as an individual, learning to make friends in your own space, kind of as an adult, which is definitely always a situation that people don't realize once you're out of school how do i make friends now um <laughs> and that's that's definitely something that kiki goes through and also it's such a good interpretation of creative blockage what happens when the thing that you're so good at that you could do effortlessly is hard to do one day and you can't do it anymore like and that defined you what are you after that and that's something that Kiki goes through and it's always something that moved me as an individual so mm -hmm. Kiki's delivery service A plus out of the Ghibli mm -hmm. yes and I think aside from where we will be having our battle royale later about where you're going to hit me with a pillow over the face for my choices <laughs> mm -hmm. the house of Ghibli has a tendency to bring out amazingly strong female characters as mm -hmm. a whole whether you are a youngling or an olderish youngling you mm -hmm. can connect and feel with those female characters so mm -hmm. yeah Thank, thank you, Grandpapa Miyazaki. We love you. Yep. Even though you're retired, not retired, retiring, but not retiring. <laughs> and you're still making a movie for us right now. Yeah. yeah. Mm, so many movies. I'm so excited. Okay. I yeah. think I think, think we've given a lot of a lot of good options for people mm -hmm. to just sit down and chew on. Yeah. Yeah. Some slice geeky slice of life to like action and <laughs> robots and action princesses. Yes. Lots of we got we got double the whammy of princesses, but yeah. on either side of it. I'm so down mm -hmm. for this. So before we we escape Dame HQ and go off to fight some more battles, we did succumb to the flu of cons, the con yeah, flu. The con flu. <laughs> So I think we might want to do a small sack anime recap. It is. It has anime in the name. It's true. All right. So we can talk about that. So uh, I was only there for one day before it I was fantastic before day. I fell. But it was a very fun day. <laughs> right. <laughs> fell in battle. I fell in battle. <laughs> Essentially. You just kind of did that nice gentle crumple where you're like, no. I, no. Yeah, essentially Switch. what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so went there bright and early. Got uh wandered around, did the autograph life, met uh 
Kimberly Brooks. Kimberly of, Brooks. Kimberly Brooks She's of so Mass nice. Effect and uh, Steven Universe and uh, Voltron fame. Yes. So that was great. Uh, got her autograph on a copy of Mass Effect 3, so that was cool. And then from there, I wandered into the vendor slash artist alley where I met up with fellow dame Amy. Yes, and I was currently cosplaying Roxanne, so that was fantastic because everybody needs a redhead at least once or twice in their life or to be one. Mm -hmm. And it was a... Thankfully, for our first day, it is always one of the slower days because everybody mm -hmm. is still working because there was breathing room in the in the vendor's hall just for a little bit, just a teensy, teensy bit. Um, there was a great selection there. We saw a friend of the show, Jen Monson, who's mm -hmm. Genoart. She does these great koi ponds and she is at uh, Creative Women's Minicon every single year. Mm -hmm. She is wonderful. So brilliant. where is Creative Women's Minicon? <laughs> Creative Women's Minicon is located at 1120 Fulton Avenue. Sweet, Sweet K. K. Of course, our sponsor at Crazy Uncle Ben's at Empire's Comics Vault. And so she also hosts the uh, paint night at the comic book store, which is fantastic. But mm -hmm. there were so many people. There were so many great mm -hmm. um artist i actually went up on the second day because mm -hmm. i did not fall in battle on the second day yes <laughs> i was still upright but not in cosplay huzzah and saw uh lucy christian and so she is oh, Chaco. yeah she's oh, Chaco. and she's the sweetest thing ever so i happened upon her because i have a youngling who absolutely got into my hero realized who she was did like baby squeeze mm -hmm. and uh she was drawing release on her poster next to her picture like in big black letters it was Aww. really cute and lucy just carried on a conversation with her like it was nothing and she was fantastic and super friendly and i was like i really like this lady she's awesome okay um so i did a little bit of that life mm -hmm. migrated back through terrible idea to go through the vendors hall on a saturday i shouldn't have done it and i gave up before i got to watch the cosplay pro wrestling which is one of my favorite things to watch. And then Sunday came and I dared to go as May. But that's when I found Minnie. Yeah. So with the exception of falling in battle, like Stephanie did, <laughs> um, they had fun. I, I mean, I guess I also had fun, but I work the show. I am one of the security staff. You're the best security staff. You're the strongest security I staff. I am the strongest security staff. There's a fun little joke that I am known as, oh, hello, doggo. I am known <laughs> as either the uh, bullhorn or Black Canary because you can hear me from one side of the convention yes, hall to can. the other side of the convention hall. If I want to point you out, you will hear me regardless if you are on the second floor and I am on the first um it's very true i heard you in the main hall when you were trying to get people in for special events and you were all the way down at the end and i was around the corner i was like that's been i hear many yep mm -hmm. hear it mm -hmm. so i apologize if i yelled at you um it was in the best interest of yourself and your safety i assure you um but yeah it was a fun weekend uh definitely interesting and a challenge with the rain so i line up people for events and i can't throw them outside because i don't want people to get wet and get con flu we um, got it anyway i know i'm sorry you out of my jurisdiction <laughs> um, but it was it was a fun fun definitely fun weekend um but being uh the con security i see a lot of people who are unprepared for conventions mm -hmm. and i basically become con mom i become con mom for like ten thousand people plus mm -hmm. every show and i want to make sure that people know how to take care of themselves and don't have a fun and safe weekend and that's why i'm so excited <gasps> that our next episode is going to be con 101 how oh, to have yeah. a fun and safe weekend at a show exactly yeah. it's a necessary it's not even a necessary evil it's just a necessity period mm -hmm. yeah just like uh, deodorant yeah yes god or breeze mm -hmm. as i spritz the crowds yeah <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, everyone has their first convention, and so if we can make anyone's first experience better with a little uh, how-to slash 101, I'm really excited about this. This is one of the episodes we've been planning for a bit, and I'm really excited to finally get to it. I know I'm excited to put it out before we end up going taking the trek for our cons this year. I'm so yes. excited. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely listen to that recap episode. It's short and sweet, and it tells you all the things that we're going to, including Emerald City Comic Con. I'm yeah. so excited. Oh my gosh. So it is, I think it is about that time for us to uh turn on turn off the lights in Dame HQ mm -hmm. and start heading for the road. So before we do that, we have to thank our sponsors. Of course, we've already mentioned our 
mostly minis, but we call them our crazy Uncle Ben yep. mm-hmm. over at Empire's Comics Vault, 1120 Fulton Avenue. Sweet K. Stop in for pugs, hugs, comic books, and uh, outright community shenanigans. It will be great. Of course, we also want to give a big honking shout out to our brand new sponsor, Mini. You got STEM Deets. I do have them Deets. We have the lovely folks over at Quill and Ink Alchemy on Etsy. If you search them on Google, if you search them on Etsy, you can find delightful scents from all of your favorite characters, fandoms, or just lovely things that you want to do as a nerd, including D&D. Get delightful scents for yourself or your partner and use the code 15% off for Hot Dame. Hot Dame. Hot Dame. And we want to also give a special shout out and thanks to uh, the TCC Network where you can find all of our super awesome things like... Oh, so uh, last week uh, we had the brand new adaptation of Carmen Sandiego <gasps> and I am going to be writing a article on my thoughts and also kind of a retrospective of the franchise so that will be up on the TCC network or as uh, the Capeless Crusaders uh, dot com and on their articles yes but there are Dame articles abounding because you guys have been consistent and I've been flagging <laughs> producer Dan gives me the bad eyebrow about that. <laughs> don't let it, don't let it. so as always I am Amy you can find me at IJU Robot on the brain social media and to my right we have the beautiful Oh, thank you, uh, Stephanie. And you can find me at Dame of the Galaxy on Instagram. And then to my right, we have Strongest Dame, uh, Minnie. You can find me at Dame Egg Sauce on the Instagrams or uh, Egg Sauce on Twitch. I'm streaming different kind of stuff just because. <gasps> I'm excited yeah. for that. Including a Resident Evil stream recently. Resident Evil 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. two, two. Yep, it's, too much. It's, it's too much for me. It is. It, <laughs> it is too much for both of you guys. I love you guys, but y'all are not into the scary spooky. I'm a pansy. Yep. <laughs> I'm a weenie. But anyway, we should start uh, the weenie and the pansy and the strongest dame have to sign off now. So just remember, geeks in distress. No need to light the signal. We're always on patrol. See you next episode. <laughs>